Today is Monday, July the 17th, and this is what's making news in the condo market this week. Thanks again for checking out this video. Hope you're enjoying the new format. We're sticking with it again this week with a few small tweaks, and we'll jump right into the first article, which is from movesmartly.com. Our friends at movesmartly.com, it's written by David LaRock, who's a mortgage broker, and David is talking about the big news of the week, of course, is that the Bank of Canada has raised interest rates. So everybody's been talking about that a lot in the past week, how this is going to affect the market, if this is going to affect the market, what does this mean for the market, what does this mean for the economy, and so on. David has some excellent analysis, as he often does in this article here, and you can check it out in more detail. But a couple of points that basically I pulled away from his analysis and I think is, is great to think about as real estate and condo investors is, well... You know, a lot of people on the street, so to speak, the general public are um, in many ways freaking out about the interest rate increases, thinking that, oh, no, this this is the beginning of the end. The real estate market's going to crash. Mortgage rates are going to, you know, soar up and, and no one's going to be able to afford their mortgages. The real estate bearers, the short sellers, they're all saying, get ready, folks. This is uh, this is it. Here's our big moment uh, that we've been waiting for all these years. It's all going to come crumbling down. Um, obviously I would firmly disagree with all those sentiments in a general statement, but, um, getting into the analysis of what's happening here, uh, David makes some great points and that's basically one of his lines is it's very unusual for a central bank to be raising rates with inflation hovering near a 10 year low as ours is now. So inflation, which is one of the main reasons why the government is looking to increase rates is to tame and lower down inflation. Inflation's hovering near a 10-year low. Hmm, so what's going on here? Uh, also, David just makes a point that, uh, you know, the, the economic outlook is not as great as the Bank of Canada is sort of making us, you know, leading us to believe or making it sound. And he raises some, some detailed points in here. I'll, I'll let you read his analysis there, which is great. But basically, the, the story here is, I think... A, I think, in my opinion, that a lot of this is the Bank of Canada raising rates is sort of keeping up with what the USA has already done. And if you look at the American economy numbers, it's it's certainly not bad. At times I'm not saying things are bad and the economy is is dragging or anything like that, but it's certainly not uh, you know a party time, cause for celebration. Look out, you know everything is going up, up, up. There's certainly a lot of uh, potential red flags on the horizon, and David outlined some of these in the article. But we'll be interesting to see, of course, what happens with rates moving forward. I personally don't believe, and many people in the industry itself uh, do not believe, that the Bank of Canada is going to continue to raise mortgage, uh, raise raise interest rates with any significance over the over the short term, medium term. Here, there may be one, there may be two other mortgage uh, bank uh, interest rates, excuse me, increases. But these are going to be done slowly over time. They're not going to, it's not going to be happening overnight. And there's a very good chance also that they may not do any more at all based on a lot of these numbers that we're seeing in the broader economy. And again, the inflation numbers are really not high. They're in fact at near 10-year lows, as David points out. So it'll be interesting to see, of course, what happens there. Um, it's also a good time to remind uh, everyone again that rising interest rates are a sign of a rising, a growing, a healthy economy. Um, so those who are saying that, you know, this is going to cause the real estate market to crash, just be a student of history. Look at the last 50 years of history. When interest rates are rising, what is generally happening? Generally, real estate prices are rising. Not to say it's impossible that they, they can't go the other way, but it's, you know, at the surface, at least, you'd have to acknowledge it's pretty unreasonable to think that in a growing economy where more people are working, people are making more money, people are spending more money, that real estate prices are going to fall. Uh, in fact, we've seen the pattern, you know, many, many times, and most of the time, if not all the time, over the last half century, it's the opposite that's happening. So again, I'll just echo what, you know, Brad Lamb and, and many other analysts have said many times over the years, that is, when you, if you're waiting for real estate prices to fall, wait for the next recession to happen. Whenever that recession sort of takes place, 
then we'll probably see real estate prices fall with some significance. Um, until that happens, real estate prices are likely going to continue to rise. It's sort of a general statement, a general principle that is just always sort of held true and been true. So food for thought there. Next article uh, is from the Globe and Mail. Is it a blip or is the GTA housing market on the verge of a se severe correction? So this is taking... Uh, Professor John Andrew from Queen's University, he's often quoted on housing matters in, in the media. Um, I don't know him personally, but generally my take on most of his uh, quotes, at least in, in, in media over the past number of years, has been he's tend to be more bearish on, on things. So I'm surprised that actually he's more bullish and he's basically coming out and saying, yeah, like the, what we're seeing right now in, in York region and some areas of the city where prices uh, have come down, you know, 10, 15% over their, you know, March, April highs for detached housing. Again, we're not talking about condos here, but for detached housing, he's basically saying that's a blip, um, that, uh, it's really the fundamentals haven't changed. It's, it's basically a psychological change that has occurred and he doesn't really see any reason why that this will, um, lead to any sort of a correction of any significance. Um, I would tend to agree with that analysis. I would tend to, as I've said many times on this show and on the podcast, that it's primarily a psychological change that has occurred, um, that the fundamentals are still the same in the market, and that, you know, yes, interest rates have gone up a little bit, but they're still incredibly low, historic lows. You can still get a mortgage for like 2.5%. Um, you know, instead of 2.4%, whatever, it's, it's still an incredibly, uh, cheap time to, to get a mortgage in Ontario. So, uh, yeah, that's that article there. And the next article is also from the Globe and Mail, Ontario developers form group aimed at mitigating housing reform. So a bunch of high profiled Toronto real estate developers have banded together to lobby with the provincial government. Basically they say, don't, change the uh, uh, Ontario Municipal Board as was proposed back in May to basically make it more in favor of municipalities. Municipalities are doing what the ratepayers tell them to do, generally speaking. So the, the prognosis here is that less and less housing is going to be built in Ontario. Supply is going to continue to not keep up with demand. And pr house prices, again, are going to continue to skyrocket so a lot of these policies that the Ontario government has uh, proposed or, or put in place in the past couple of months, including this and rent control and others, it's, you know, most of the analysis, uh, the pundits, the talking heads, people like me on both sides of the debate, bulls, bears, everything, um, people inside Canada, outside Canada, the, the consensus is that these things will hurt supply. These things will uh, discourage more supply from being added to the market, which will only make the problem worse in the long run. And finally, the last article from the CBC, Toronto's luxury condo sales surge despite the market, Sotheby's International says. So Sotheby's put out a report looking at uh, condo sales. GTA condo sales that are over $1 million are up 98% from last year. So again, the, the high end of the market where two, three years ago, it would be extremely rare for any condo to sell over $1 million. Like you could almost count them on your two hands, the number of condos that would sell um, in the city, you know, in a given month over a million dollars. Now, of course, you know, a million dollars in a condo is happening almost every day. Um, and again, the main reason for that, the main driver of that, and what's going to continue to, uh, lift the condo market in general is the fact that house prices have gotten so out of control that the, the, the chart of uh, house prices gone like that. Condo prices have been relatively flat. Sorry if you can't hear me there. Condo house prices have gone like that. Condo prices are relatively flat. And so the condos are just starting to catch up to where houses already are. The, the gap is still at historic highs and we're going to continue to see condo prices rising because of that um, and more and more people are going to be choosing to live in a condo as opposed to living in a house okay that's it for this week's episode i hope you enjoyed that if you did please go ahead and hit the like button on facebook hit the share button send this out email to someone uh, listen to it on itunes podcast uh, wherever you're watching this or seeing this i appreciate your support 
And until next time, I hope you have a great week.